Good afternoon everyone, Country Flyboy here, and today, Night Ops in the Milviz Cessna 310. So, Night Ops, I always do a special Night Ops videos on these aircraft specific tutorials. Night Ops is mostly about managing the external and internal lights of the aircraft. We're here at Jekyll Island Airfield, Jekyll Island, Georgia, which is a small public airfield on, you guessed it, Jekyll Island. So, right there is where we're at. Here's the grand scheme of things. So, just to the north is Brunswick McKinnon Airfield, and a little further than that is Brunswick Golden Isles, where we started this series right over there. Uh, we'll be flying at night to show you how to operate at this airfield, or not this airfield specifically, but how to operate this aircraft at night. So, let's go ahead and talk about it, since night flying is pretty much exactly like day flying with a few extra hazards, I want to talk mostly about managing the lights. We're going to talk real quick about the external lights. So obviously beacon lights should be on, and it is on. Beacon lights on whenever your engines are on, so, before, so from before starting to after shutdown, the beacon light is on. It's sort of a, an international symbol that I have a power unit running. Um, the actual rule says power unit, not engine. So if you were flying an airplane equipped with an APU, you would have to have the beacon on whenever the APU is running as well. This airplane doesn't have an APU though. So in um, extra to that, landing and strobe lights have to be on when you are taking off and landing. Uh, the landing lights can come off after you have taken off and departed the area. So it's a good idea to have landing lights on whenever you are going to be landing at an airport or taking off from an airport. Uh, well, they need to be on if you're taking off and landing, but whenever you get in close proximity to an airport you plan on doing operations at, turn the landing lights on because it's a good way for other airplanes to see you. Strobe lights should be on whenever you're airborne, so from takeoff, from before takeoff to after landing, strobe lights come on. Now what about taxi lights and nav lights? The nav lights come on from, I cannot remember what the regs say. I usually turn them on from dusk till dawn, or if I'm flying IFR. So from dusk to dawn, in, or in moments of reduced visibility, i.e. IFR, or bad weather's coming through, and it's, it's a little darker than normal, nav lights are on. Even, you don't have to have them on for VFR flight during the day. I do prefer to turn them on for IFR flight during the day, even if they aren't necessarily required. Taxi light, you can leave it off. You really only need it when you are taxiing at night. So... That's the management of external lights. So we're at night, I'm gonna leave the nav lights on. What about the internal lights? Uh, the internal lights on the Milvis 310 are a bit finicky. This first knob here, this one here, this is the master internal lights control instrument panel light. It flips on the um, panel lighting. This light has to be on, for some reason, this light has to be on in order for all the other internal lights to function. The next one, if we right click, we can increase its intensity. This one is the engine management lights. So as you can see, it's brightening up the backlighting on the engine gauges, as well as the um, EGT gauges down here. Show you something real quick. The GPS, they are bright enough there's, that you can see their screens already. Same with the avionics. You just can't really see their buttons and knobs too well until you turn on the master battery, or the master uh, light. Next knob up, I still have yet to figure out what that does. Uh, you can click it. It says it's the radio lights, but they come on with the master instrument panel light anyway, so I don't think that light does anything. Next one, we'll right click to increase. This is your flight instruments lights. Uh, you can increase their brightness intensity. Uh, that is full blast. and that's lowest intensity. So, lowest intensity, full blast. I like somewhere in between, right about there. But again, master instrument panel light has to be on in order for any of these to work, which is a bit weird, but eh, what are you gonna do? Alrighty, so, I'm gonna tune the local CTAF frequency, 09 or Juliet. There's no weather services at this field. 
Uh, and I've reset the weather to, um, supposed to be clear, but for some reason there is a wind. Uh, we'll take off on runway 36. We'll announce our taxi. So as we get ready to taxi on the ground at night, put that taxi light on. It lets you see the, um, the center line a little bit better. Alright, we'll taxi out of the parking area. So as far as lights on the airport grounds, um, you should know that already if you're flying an airplane like this. Blue is for taxiways, white is for runways, amber is also for runways. We got the split lights at the end that signify the end of the runway. Land, uh, runway lights are put in 200 foot intervals. Alright, here's the whole short line. And there's nobody flying in, so we'll go ahead and announce our takeoff, but we will do a delay on the runway. Zero Niner Juliet, traffic Cessna, November 310, Bravo Victor, taking off runway 36, departing straight up. Alright, so I'm going to flip landing and strobe lights on. Now, taxi light you're going to want to have off at some point when you get airborne. I like to leave it on for takeoff and landing because it lets me see the runway a little bit better than just the landing lights do. Alright, so flip these down to low. You're good, you're good. Flip you to altitude. Alright, so we are ready for takeoff. All of our external and internal lights are set now. You really want to make sure you get the lights set prior to takeoff. So our taxi, our beacon, land, taxi, nav, and strobe lights are all on right now. All right, this is a bit of a short runway, so I'm going to give it one notch of flaps. Hold the brakes as we go on full throttle. Hit full throttle. Release the brakes. Up to red line. Rotate. And there we have a bit of a bug with a 310. Don't ask me why the lights do that. They disappear at that point and then they come back. Alright, gear up. Taxi light will shut off when the gear comes up. So don't worry about the switch. But I will go ahead and flip it off since uh, it's not required. Now, in addition to flying at night when flying at night in addition to the, the management of the lights we also have some other hazards to worry about in particular if you're flying in an area over the ocean or a large body of water you may notice if you look out there well it's a clear night tonight and you can clearly see the Milky Way and the stars and whatnot so I'm gonna point us to the east where it's a little bit harder to tell if you look over there, you can't even see where the sky ends and the water begins. That's one hazard to worry about. Since water acts like a mirror and reflects whatever's in the sky, you got to be careful about that when flying VFR at night. Another hazard is things like the black hole approach, which I've talked about before. The black hole approach is a phenomenon that happens when, they're on, when there's no other light references on the ground. So, say an airfield out in the middle of the boonies, and the only lights you can see are its runway lights. There's no other references on the ground. You can get what's called a black hole approach. So it quite literally looks like you're flying down a black tunnel towards a light at the end. Level. I'm gonna let the autopilot take over the plane real quick. Level us off at 3,500. And I'm heading bug over to fly south. We'll parallel the coast for a while. There we go. So, night flying really is operations wise, and no different from day flying with the exception of 
you have the added issue of managing your lights. So now we're airborne and we're getting away from the airfield, we can flip the landing lights off and stow them. Especially with a 310, you want to stow the lights as soon as you can because they do give you a, a relatively decent amount of drag. But at this point, nav and strobe lights are on. We will not be in any collision lights on. We would not touch the lights again until we were landing, basically. So what other parts are there to night flying? Uh, well, when flying cross country at night, if you're doing VFR, you might want to stick closer to towns because uh, you need to be able to see the crown, obviously, and waypoints like cities and other well-lit areas will give you the best waypoints for night flying at the ground. As you can see, there's nothing over here, so it's a little bit harder to tell uh, what island this is. Hell, I can't even remember what island this is. But we know this is Jekyll Island because we could match it up on our chart. We can see that it has an airport off to the side. It has an airport just to the north on a separate island. It's got a small town on it. Yeah, we'd be able to figure out that this is Jekyll Island pretty easily. But this, no way of knowing. I can't even remember the name of that island. I just noticed I left my flaps up. Uh, we did exceed the VFE speed too. Oh well, it's a simulator. You can make mistakes like that. All right, so night flying, yep, operations, no different from day flying. Just be aware of managing your lights properly and the hazards, like the fact that the water acts like a mirror or the black hole approach. Um, black hole approach is not easy to simulate in flight sim, but there is another one that can happen from time to time, and that is called the false horizon. If I turn this back inland a bit and don't look at my instruments, I'm going to turn the labels off real quick. Now, it's not working too well here because, again, can't really tell where exactly the horizon is. But if you were flying over a city and you had lights everywhere, it gets hard to tell where the horizon truly is because the lights sometimes tend to blend in with the stars. You get a phenomenon called the false horizon. It could look like you're in a bank, but you're not. Or it could look like you're flying straight and level, but you're really in a bank. Basically, it's the city lights on the ground, sort of off in the horizon, mixing in with the stars, and it gets harder to tell. So you may be using the instruments a little bit more with night flying. Let me turn my labels back on. I want to know where that plane's at. It's four miles, and he's a little lower than me, so we're no factor. All right, that was flying at night with the 310. Bit of a short video, but yeah, really all I had to discuss was the management of the lights and a few hazards to night flying. Well, hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you next time.